Going mainstream is usually seen as the safer choice, the more reliable result. However, sometimes when you go off the beaten path, you can find some uh, really good options out there. Oh, you guys probably want to know about CPUs, huh? Fine, roll the... Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. Until recently, any chip with a core count higher than six meant forking out well over $1,000. Thanks to Threadripper and Core i9, enthusiasts now have eight core and higher CPU options that are within reach, but that wasn't always the case when I originally built this system behind me. When I was designing a new build, I wanted something faster than just another overclockable 5820K. And with DirectX 12 and Vulkan beginning to utilize multi-core chips more and more effectively, I thought the time was right to spring for something a little bit outside of the mainstream. What I found was this engineering sample of a Xeon E5 2680V3. Compatible with X99, it has 12 cores clocked at 2.4 GHz with a max turbo of 3.2. It sports the same Haswell E architecture as the 5820K. While the Xeon has a slower clock speed and is not overclockable, it also has twice as many cores. But is that enough to make up for the difference in both work and play? Well, that's what we're here to find out. The testbed today consists of an Asus X99 motherboard, 32 gigs of Kingston HyperX DDR4 running at 2133, and an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win running at its stock boost speed. This card is already heavily overclocked out of the box, climbing to 2025 MHz on its own and peaking at just 68 degrees Celsius. The two CPUs I'm testing today, as I mentioned, are the Xeon E5 2680 V3 12-core engineering sample. <laughs> Say that one three times fast. It runs at a base clock of 2.4 GHz with a turbo on all 12 cores up to 2.7, and can see single-threaded peaks up to 3.2. The 5820K, to be as unfair as possible, is running with a 4 GHz overclock up from its stock of 3.3 across all six cores. It's not an aggressive overclock, but given that I'm only running an EVO 212 for cooling, this is easily attainable and stayed well below 60 degrees Celsius at full tilt. With some tweaking, 4.3 to 4.5 is attainable on these chips. So we know single-threaded performance wins in games at 1080p, but I game at 1440 and I did even way back when I built this rig. Surely this is going to be a landslide victory for the 5820K, right? Well, let's run the synthetics first. In Cinebench, the results are very predictable. Single-threaded goes to the 5820K with a score of 157 to just 113. Multi-threaded, the 2680 reigns supreme with a score of 1678 to the 5820K's 1156. Superposition Max VR benchmark shows nearly identical numbers to both chips with the slight edge going to the 5820K. In Firestrike Standard, we see our 1080p predictions come true. The per-core performance is dominant, with the 5820K losing the physics by just 1,000 points, but scoring a full 35% faster in the combined test. Firestrike Ultra in 4K shows a dead heat between the two chips, but we already knew that 4K was the great equalizer. TimeSpy, with DirectX 12 running the show, has the 2680 scoring equal in graphics, but crushing the 5820K in both CPU and physics tests, kind of proving my point that multi-threaded performance may be the way of the future here. Moving into actual gaming, it turns out 1440p is kind of a great equalizer here as well. Just Cause 3 and Project Cars both show slight advantages in both average and low frame times on the 5820K versus the Xeon, but we're only talking a difference of 5 to 6 FPS. Not enough for anyone to notice, even on the low side of things, and in neither game was there any noticeable stuttering going on. The other title tested here show practically identical numbers to one another, varying only by 1 or 2 FPS in each test. So in the end, did I make the right decision here? Well, considering I spent about the same amount of money on the Xeon as I would have on a 5820K, I would say yes, although that choice was not without risks. I bought the 2680V3 from a Chinese seller on eBay, and at $345, I put a lot of faith in receiving what was advertised. There are a number of stories out there from people ordering similar chips and winding up with a 1.6 GHz quad core or other CPUs for other sockets entirely. Overall, this was a very fun experiment, and 45% increase in multi-threaded performance over an overclocked 5820K was a boon for productivity. But yet again, it's time to move on to uh, other projects, test new architectures, and build new custom loops. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for what I'm hoping will be a pretty awesome build. But if you're worried I'm going uh, too high class on you, 
Up next week, we're taking a look at a gaming build on an extreme budget. In my review of the GT1030, I mentioned you could pair it with an off-lease Dell with an Ivy Bridge i5 and make a gaming PC for just over $200. I'll be putting that to the test. A lot of you have commented how you really like what I test on this channel, be it a Xeon processor or some really obscure motherboards. Uh, I really enjoy bringing you guys content that you like, so keep commenting and uh, I'll try to deliver more content that's interesting to you. Uh, thank you all for watching. Check out the video description for my Amazon affiliate link if you have any shopping to do. It really does help out the channel. Like and subscribe on the way down there so you don't miss anything happening on the channel. Now, uh, I didn't time this one all that well. I've got a lot of beer left in this class. I'm going to go finish it. Cheers. It's a really good IPA. Mm.